a remarkable experience of being a teacher is that you start, let's say in the first year, and somebody looks absent-minded. And after three years when they graduate, you see a person solidly present and shining. And then you know that something has happened, there is a process that is really, really been lived through. The remarkable thing as a teacher is that you see somebody who even forgot what he came for ever for a problem and they're healed and they are living their life with renewed joy, uh, re, say that? renewed power, life force even, the wish to live. I always remind them to a student who came to me uh, who was uh, Turkish and uh, I didn't speak very good English and she saw one of these demonstrations it was a different culture, a different language and she said to me how can I do that and I simply said well look just flow with the work, do your practice and you'll be amazed slowly and progressively the skills will uh, build up and she did that and eventually got the diploma and then went on to work full-time using regression therapy and I think this is really what the whole thing is about. It's about letting people use their intuition to use the toolkit. And even if they've only got a small number of tools, they can use those effectively. It's just as they go through the training course, they can add extra tools to it and become a more complete uh, therapist. Firstly, when students are learning the subject, uh, since a lot of the modalities that we bring in involve working with yourself as well because you have to it's not just about studying the book there's self-work involved so they go through their own personal transformations and it's very beautiful to just watch that more than more than anything else and of course sometimes those transformations involve uh, physical changes with issues that they had in their physical bodies sometimes it involves a remarkable change of behavior and you see it happening through the curriculum. Uh, it brings you back in touch with qualities like faith, trust, being able to hold a space neutrally for somebody else. So there are many such um, altruistic qualities, I would say, that you watch in the process uh, coming up as they go through their training. There was an example, a lady who was um, very absent-minded, worried about her son. The son had been diagnosed with I don't know, one of those quite fashionable things to say is ADHD and uh, ADD. Uh, it's a bit of a pity, it's a big pity that the labeling is so common um, because those children are not focused, they are not really present in their body for a reason. If, if I'm not present in my body, who is? So there is an influence from the environment disturbing them. So I worked with this client in the class, with this student. I said, okay, uh, this will be an example of how to work with somebody else. In this case, the mother works on her son. She imagines to invite her son. And the boy says, there is an old man with him. So we free the old man, which apparently is a soul that is attached to the boy. And the boy says to his mother, in this imaginary meeting, in the session, he looks like granddad. The mother says that doesn't make sense because granddad is not dead, he lives. So he cannot be attached to my son anyway. A few weeks later, I have that same class. The story is that granddad's brother was in a hospital. He was very uh, much suffering from dementia and he was dying. And he stood up from the bed and he said, I feel better and I want to go home, which he did. That happened two days after the session in the class. So the man who looked like grandpa was not his granddad, but it was the brother of granddad who actually was dying and didn't die. Those are remarkable things. The students in the first year hear that and see it. And they know that what you're doing is not just a fantasy, they feel the reality of it. 
real is what makes the difference. It works. To me, again, I have enormous respect for students, equally as I do for clients, because um, there's a dedication that goes with this work, and there's a genuine caring about other people. And so when I do the trainings, I model um, respect. I model boundaries. Uh, in this work in particular, you have to have boundaries because you can say, okay, go to a past lifetime. They can go anywhere. You have to focus the session. You have to know how to get them there. Uh, in the trainings, one of the things I focus on is how do you interview? How do you ask questions to get under the presenting problem? How do you get to the core issues instead of what, my problem is my husband? No, <laughs> you're in this marriage, this is the problem. Of course, I never tell them that. Um, so yeah, with the students, I'll tell them. With the clients, I never tell. Because I can tell you, oh, this is your problem, and you go, yeah, okay, well. But if the client realizes, oh, I'm the one that's causing this, then they can do something about it. And so what I do is create the environment for healing. I move to my center and stay there. And I provide um, an environment and then the structure for them to go wherever they need to go. Whether it's past lives or inner child or whatever it is, whether I'm going to use gestalt or psychosynthesis, whatever method I'm going to use, it becomes a dance, becomes a flow in through the psyche. It's a co-creative space where they're learning from me. I'm learning very much from them, from the space from where they come, the questions they ask. And very often it's bizarre, but the answers that apply to them make sense to me later on. They don't make sense to me in that moment, but later on they make sense. So every time I teach a subject in regression, I come out a different person. For me, it's a personal journey completely. The most important thing what we can offer to our students is opening up to your potential and knowing it is there. There is doubt in people sometimes. Can I do that? Yes, you can. Will I be able to? Yes, you are. It's all there. It's all in you. Spirituality is a potential. Spirituality is connected to a lot of other things, but we have a spiritual potential that we can use and that we can access with our intellect. So what is the most important thing, I think, that we as teachers, as schools, offer our students and they offer the clients is self-trust. Whoever you are, whatever you are, trust yourself and believe in yourself. And then when that change is made, diseases fly away and people do and create their lives and they allow themselves to make mistakes which is a big thing.